Hey there, what's going on? Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled The Malware Hunter, Investigating Auto Starts. My name is Tim Warner and I'm a CBT Nuggets trainer. How much time do you invest in investigating malware infections on other people's computers? I know that this doesn't happen on your own systems or any systems under your direct administrative control. That's tongue-in-cheek, of course. <laughs> but malware is a part of life for us Windows administrators. And in this series of micro nuggets, this is the first one, I'm going to take advantage of Mark Rasinovich's and Microsoft's Sys Internals tools to help us diagnose and resolve malware infections. In this first initial nugget, we'll concentrate on Mark's beautiful Auto Runs utility. Auto Runs, if you don't know, is a graphical and a command line tool. They're two separate tools written by two guys, Mark Rosinovich and Bryce Cogswell. The code is now owned by Microsoft, as you can see here. We're at the appropriate TechNet page. You can download Auto Runs and Auto Runs C for free directly from here, or you can go to live.sysinternals.com and get direct download links. I would suggest that you place your sysinternals tools all in the same directory and that'll become obvious why as we go along many of these tools are linked together alternatively you can place this directory in your path environment variable that's another option let's start auto runs and I'll show you how it works now you can start auto runs as a normal user but I suggest if you're troubleshooting malware for sure you want to right click and choose run as administrator to elevate your credentials in running this tool You'll see it has many, many tabs, a daunting number of tabs. Mark has deeply researched what are called Auto Start Extensibility Points, or ASCPs. As it happens, Windows programs can add hooks into the registry, into the Windows directory, into your browser, into your scheduled tasks, into your services, into your driver code, to automatically start when a user is logged on and or the system is booted up. And of course, this is a chief way that malware gets on your system. Some people who have some experience with Windows know about the run and run once registry keys. And th those are definitely good places to check. But you'll find oftentimes if you find a rogue or malicious process there, you delete it and it comes popping back. The reason for that likely is because the malware has infected other ASCPs and auto runs reveals them all at least that's what it does ideally where I normally go when I run auto runs first is the logon tab and as you see here we have mappings to HKey local machine software current version run several of those the startup items directory in the shell and so forth now you'll notice here these default columns are very important we have the entry and you notice that we can deselect to disable a particular entry and we also have the image path this is very crucial because it gives you a fully qualified path to where that particular item lives in the file system now when I run auto runs I will as a matter of practice open the options menu select filter options and check verify code signatures and hide Microsoft entries now it's true that some malware can spoof or try to spoof Microsoft legitimate system files. Microsoft entries by and large are digitally signed. We're gonna cover that in a separate micro nugget, but it's important to get those out of the way so we can focus more on non Microsoft stuff, which is where our attack vectors are coming from. Along those lines, verify code signatures makes sure that the digital signature on that image does in fact map to who it says it does and as you can see when you have that option selected any verified items show up verified so this APS daemon is digitally signed by Apple Inc and it's been verified you have to have an internet connection to be able to download your certificate revocation list and so forth that's another issue that we'll cover in a later micro nugget in this series if you have a system that you suspect is infected you do want to take it off the network immediately but anyway, those options are cool. You'll notice the color coding that happens. Your top level items here are color coded a light blue. If you go to the user menu, you can actually view processes for all user profiles on the system. Now I just have, besides the system processes themselves, one user account, my Tim account. But if I were troubleshooting a system that had multiple user profiles, you can actually view an offline user profile simply by selecting it from this list in the user menu. 
Thus, you can be logged on using your administrative credential and parse auto start entries for other users. Another tip that many people aren't aware of is that you can put auto runs on a recovery DVD or flash drive, boot an infected system offline, and use the Analyze Offline system. You'd simply choose that from the file menu, browse to the location of the Windows directory in the user profile folder you want to investigate, and you can disable or remove entries that are suspicious to bring back a system that's otherwise hosed. Isn't that cool? Another cool thing you can do is save and compare baselines. You might, for instance, be imaging a new system for work. What you want to do before you deploy that image is do a file, save, and you can save that baseline as an auto runs data, ARN file. And then, as you go along, maybe a month later, whatever, the system's behaving very sluggishly, you can actually, I'm just deselecting some items here for comparison purposes, we can do a file compare, locate our baseline file, and run a comparison. You see this color code. Now note I'm not giving you the colors because I'm colorblind, <laughs> but you can see here that the difference between the baseline and the current state of auto runs is these two auto start entries. Isn't that great? Now you might be thinking, well, isn't auto runs redundant? After all, we have MS config. MS config has come a long way, especially in Windows 8, but I don't, I've never seen, I was gonna say I don't think I've ever seen, I have never seen a utility that so comprehensively enumerates these extensibility points. So besides log on, you have hooks into Windows Explorer. When you right click an item, the shortcut menu that pops up, browser helper objects, toolbars and in Internet Explorer, scheduled tasks, services. These are go to areas when you're troubleshooting a system. And then it gets really low level down to individual device drivers, codecs. One that is particularly important and also overlooked is image hijacks. An image refers to executable code. It could be a DLL, it could be an executable file. And if a legitimate image has been hijacked by a malicious process, it shows that in this list. Let's come back to log on because I want to show you what we can do through the context menu. If we right click an item, we can delete it. You want to be careful with that, of course. You can jump to entry or jump to image. If you jump to image, then helpfully, Windows Explorer or File Explorer, as the case may be, will open up to that exact process where you can add a dot back to deactivate it. You can investigate it further, whatever it is that you want to do. This is just a shortcut link file. You can jump to entry, and that will, depending upon what it is, take you into the registry where a particular item lives or to the file system, as I said. Search Online pops open your default web browser and simply runs a search using your default search engine in that default web browser for that process. And as Mark talks about when he speaks, you have to be careful because some of the first links are themselves malicious or at least unhelpful. So that's of perhaps limited utility. And then if you have Process Explorer in the same folder as Auto Runs, you can select Process Explorer from the shortcut menu and that opens Process Explorer and also the Properties dialog for that particular process. I'm going to cover Process Explorer in another micro nugget, so I'm not going to spend any time on it right now. Giving credit where credit is due, I've learned a great deal not only with direct practice with these Sys internals utilities, but also from Mark's book. Check it out from Microsoft Press. It's Windows Sys internals administrators reference. It's absolutely something you should have on your e-reader or physically on your bookshelf in your office. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.